Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation with complex numbers. Make sure to check out my other video that I made uh, for today. I made two videos because it's Saturday. You get two videos, okay? Anyway, so we have this interesting equation negative 4 to the power z equals 2. If only I had 4 to the power z equals 2, then I could probably complete, okay, conclude with the following. 4 square root of 4 is equal to 2, so z is probably 1 half, right? Because 4 to the power 1 half is equal to 2. So that's the square root. Can there be another solution? Maybe z could be 1 half plus some imaginary piece, right? Okay, anyways, that's a different question. So it's not like the square root, it's kind of like the square root, but not really. And I'll kind of bring that up again towards the end, okay? So, let's see how we can solve this problem. Negative 4 is the base. We have a negative base, so normally if you are working with real numbers and you have a negative base, if you raise it to a rational power, then you've got a problem. That's why exponential functions are not well defined for negative bases. Most of the time we require the base to be positive. But if z is an integer, then we're good because we can evaluate the uh, exponent or the power, whatever. Okay, cool. Let's see how we can solve this problem. We have a negative 4 to the power z equals 2. And I said again, it's kind of like the square root, but not really. What am I supposed to do? Exponentiate everything, or should we say exponenti exponentify? Okay, anyways, let's use the polar form. Okay, it's a better uh, word. How do we use the polar form? Uh, we can write negative 4. If you consider the argon plane, negative 4 is going to be on the real axis, but on the negative side, it's going to be something like this. And then, of course, its modulus is going to be 4 units, but negative 4 is just going to have, uh, it'll make a pi radian angle, which is its argument. And the modulus is going to be 4. And you can write any complex number as r e to the i theta. r is the modulus, and theta is the argument. Okay? So, here's what we can do for negative 4 then. It's 4 times e to the power i times the argument, which is pi. But I'd like to include all possibilities, and I want to add multiples of 2 pi to this. n is an integer, I'm just adding 2 pi n. Make sense? So this is negative 4, and then of course I need to raise it to the power z. And then I'm going to write something for 2. 2 is easy because it's going to be on the real side. Uh-oh, that's not the scale. Maybe somewhere here, but notice that the angle is going to be 0 radians, or I can use 2 pi radians, or any multiple of 2 pi. Make sense? So I can kind of write 2 as 2 times e to the power i times 2 pi k. k is another integer. n and k do not have to be the same. Can, they can be the same, but they don't have to be. Now, let's go ahead and see what we can do with this. Obviously, we have a power that is applied to a product. We can go ahead and distribute it or get rid of z right away. Uh, I mean, bring it down, not get rid of it because we want to solve for z, right? Let's go to natural log both sides. That's going to give us z times the ln of a product. That's going to be ln 4 plus ln e to the power something. In other words, we are turning this product into a sum because that's what the log does, right? And on the right hand side, we're going to get ln 2 plus i times 2 pi k. Same idea, but simpler, kind of looking simpler. Now, what should we do? What do you think? Divide both sides by this, okay? Then we're going to get z by itself. Let's go ahead and do it. z is going to be ln 2 plus i times 2 pi k. I write the i first. Usually, sometimes people are going to write it as 2 pi k i, but I want to write the i so that I can emphasize the imaginary part of this complex number, and that's going to be 2 pi k in this case. Make sense? And I'm going to divide it by this ln4 thing, plus i times pi plus 2 pi n. Okay? You get the idea? Okay. Let's go ahead and see what we can do. Uh-oh, I didn't mean to erase it, maybe just to make it a little... Uh, okay. It's kind of being messed up, but... So the idea is, let's go ahead and back up. Anyways, I'm not... I'm trying to, I was get rid of, trying to get rid of this. Anyways, it gave me so much trouble. So, here's what we have. 
that's what z is equal to, but that kind of looks complicated, doesn't it? It does. So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit because I need to show you uh, something, okay? So suppose uh, k and n are both equal to 0. This will greatly simplify the process, and I know it's kind of like an oversimplification, but hey, I gave you the general solution. Here we go. But then we can kind of simplify it, right? So if k and n are both equal to 0, then we get the following. z equals ln 2 plus 0. Notice that that piece cancels out or disappears. And at the bottom, we have ln 4 plus i pi. So this is basically using the principal value of the argument, because it could be pi or 3 pi or 5 pi or whatever. And this is what I mean. If only we did not have the i pi, this would be ln 2 divided by ln 4. Suppose this disappeared. Obviously, it's not going to happen. But if it did, then we would have, let's not set it equal to z. Hypothetically speaking, we would have ln 2 over ln 4. And this would be 2 ln 2 because ln 2 squared. And then it would just turn into 1 half. So this is what I meant by it's kind of like the square root, but not quite. Okay, that's what I meant by that. So what can I do with this though? Well, you can kind of get rid of the complex denominator. In other words, multiply the denominator by the conjugate. And that conjugate is going to be what? ln4 minus i pi and ln4 minus i pi. If you want to write in the standard form. Let me go ahead and show you how to write in the standard form. And then maybe if you have some time left towards the end, if I feel like it, I'm going to show you. Maybe we can plug it in and see if this really works. Anyways, so you can go ahead and distribute this. It's going to give you ln2, ln4 minus i times pi times ln2. That's going to be our uh, numerator. And at the bottom, you're going to have ln4 squared plus pi squared. And if you really wanted to separate it, like split it into pieces, you're going to get ln2 over ln4 minus, okay, um, of course, there should be a pi squared too. I forgot to write that. Minus i times pi ln2 divided by ln4 squared plus pi squared. So notice that even the real part of Wait a minute, what did I do here? Pi times ln2. Okay, that, that's like, what does that look like? Even the real part of the z is not one half. It's actually kind of one half. Okay, you get the idea? Now, we can definitely go ahead and try to plug it in. Maybe not in this form, but in, the, in this form. How about that? We can go ahead and replace z with ln2 to the power ln4 plus i pi. And then, is this going to give us 2, really? Because that's what the z, that's what z looks like, at least when k and n are both equal to 0. And that's for you to find out because we ran out of time. Okay. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.